Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about amines. These are compounds which contain nitrogen as a functional group in the molecule. The simplest of all nitrogen compounds is NH3, ammonia. This is a molecule which has nitrogen bonded to three hydrogens. And remember, nitrogen on the periodic table has five valence electrons to begin with, so it has a lone pair as well on the nitrogen. And so the structure of ammonia looks like this. Unlike alcohols, where we talk about the type of substitution of an alcohol on the carbon it's attached to, for example, if we have an alcohol attached to a primary carbon, we call that a primary alcohol. If the alcohol is attached to a secondary carbon, we call that a secondary alcohol, and so on. When we talk about classifying amines with regards to substitution, we're actually talking about the degree of alkyl substitution on the nitrogen itself. So ammonia would be completely unsubstituted, so it would essentially be zero. However, if you put one alkyl group on, such as in the case of methyl amine, this molecule would be an example of a primary amine. If we have two alkyl groups, such as dimethylamine, this would be a secondary amine. Trimethylamine would be a tertiary amine, and because there's a lone pair on that nitrogen, we can use that to donate to make another bond and give a formal plus charge. This would be an ammonium salt with whatever counter ion we have. But if we have four alkyl groups attached, it's a quaternary ammonium salt. So when we talk about degree of alkyl substitution for amine classification, we're talking about the substitution on the nitrogen, not the carbon it's attached to. That is very different than what we discussed earlier with alcohols. Well, another way that we use to classify types of amines is based on their reactivity, and we'll get to reactivity in a few minutes. But in this case, we have nitrogen amine compounds which are attached to alkyl groups, that is sp3 hybridized carbons. For example, 2-butanamine is attached to an sp3 hybridized carbon. This is what we refer to as an aliphatic amine attached to only alkyl groups. This nitrogen is also attached to only an alkyl group, and this is a diamine. There's a nitrogen on both ends of a six carbon chain, and this would be an alkyl aliphatic amine as well because they're attached to sp3 hybridized carbons. We compare and contrast those with another class of amines which we refer to as aromatic amines. These are nitrogens which are directly attached to an aromatic ring, whether it's a benzene such as the examples on this page or other kinds of aromatic rings. These have a different reactivity because the lone pair of that nitrogen can be delocalized throughout the pi system. So this nitrogen, whose reactivity is mostly associated with that lone pair, has a very different reactivity as compared to something that's just an alkyl group. And this is why we separate the kinds of amines as aliphatic versus aromatic. A few other things I want you to take note of on this slide are some of the names that we're talking about here. Here's a primary amine attached to a benzene. This has a common name called aniline. This is probably a name that you will encounter frequently. Notice if we have substitution on the nitrogen, we use the designation N to refer to that group being on the nitrogen. So the methyl group is attached to the nitrogen on aniline. If we use aniline as the parent name for a molecule, you can see here, for example, we have a nitro group in the four position where this automatically takes number one if we're using it as the parent name. For methyl aniline, has a common name of toluidine, and 3-methoxy aniline has a common name of anisidine. Don't worry too much about these common names. I just want you to be familiar with the fact that there are various common names associated with a lot of these aromatic amines. Aniline is one you probably should remember. Well, nitrogens can be part of a ring as well, and we, we refer to these compounds that have nitrogen in a ring as nitrogen heterocycles. Hetero meaning an atom that is not carbon, so it's not a carbocycle. It contains a heteroatom or something that's not carbon within the ring. These can be aliphatic, such as pyrrolidine here or piperidine, the five or six membered ring, or they could be aromatic amines, such as pyridine, nitrogen within the ring of an aromatic ring, or pyrrole. Many compounds that have biological activity that are isolated from natural sources do contain nitrogen heterocycles. For example, this is morphine on the bottom right. Morphine is a molecule which has analgesic properties, and you can see that there's a nitrogen contained in a ring in this complicated structure. It's a nitrogen heterocycle that happens to be an aliphatic amine. 
Uh, the molecule on the right is nicotine. Obviously has some biological activities. When people smoke, they get nicotine into their system. This has two nitrogen heterocycles, one being an aromatic pyridine ring and the other being an aliphatic pyrrolidine ring. These nitrogen compounds do tend to bind in various parts of the brain often, and so we find molecules which have nitrogen heterocycles often have pronounced biological activities, such as nicotine, morphine, cocaine, and some other molecules. Well, you've seen some of the names for the amines. Let's talk a little bit more about naming amine compounds. We use the word amine as an ending or suffix on the parent name to refer to an amine compound. So we replace the suffix E with A-M-I-N-E. For example, butane would become butanamine. We've dropped the E and added amine to that, and it happens to be on the number two carbon, as opposed to one butanamine, which would look like this. Here's an example of phenylethanamine. This is a molecule which shows that the parent compound, ethane amine, has uh, a two carbon parent molecule with a phenyl group on the one carbon. Notice the one designation goes to where the nitrogen is attached. That's the number one carbon. The phenyl is a substituent and it does have a stereochemistry associated with it because it is a stereogenic carbon so we have to indicate the S stereochemistry for that molecule. And again if we have more than one nitrogen in the molecule uh, we call that a diamine. Notice we add the E back on because putting two consonants next to each other would be bad. We can't just drop the E in this case. So this is 1,6-hexane diamine, indicating that the amines are on the ends in the 1 and 6 carbons of the molecule. Relative to other functional groups, amines tend to get lower priority. For example, alcohols will get the highest priority in molecules that contain nitrogen compounds. For example, the parent molecule for this is ethanol because the alcohol gets priority and the alcohol then gets the number one carbon. So this is 2-amino ethanol. So when we use the amine name as a substituent on something else, we use this word amino to refer to it as a substituent. Here is the parent molecule benzoic acid and again a 2-amino group because there's a nitrogen attached on the second carbon. If we have more than one alkyl group or substituent on the nitrogen, we have to give that a designation of N indicating it's attached on the nitrogen. For example, if we have the parent molecule as aniline and we have another ethyl group attached to the nitrogen, it's n ethyl aniline as opposed to a molecule where we might have an ethyl group in this position, which would be on the aniline itself. This would be 3-ethyl aniline, not N-ethyl aniline. Um, if you have more than one substituent, then you can choose a parent name. In this case, uh, cyclohexanamine is the parent molecule. And then we have two methyl groups attached to the nitrogen, so we have to give an N designation for each of them. So it's NN dimethyl cyclohexanamine. So we use this designation N as opposed to using a number to indicate that it's attached on the nitrogen. Quaternary ammonium salts are named using sort of inorganic nomenclature. Uh, so ammonium chloride is the salt for N plus Cl minus, and we have four methyl groups. So this is tetramethyl ammonium chloride or hexadecyl pyridinium chloride. Pyridinium is the parent molecule and then we have a 16 carbon chain hexadecyl pyridinium chloride. Um, this is the name for that molecule. Or benzyl, this is a benzyl group, benzyl trimethyl ammonium hydroxide. There are some common names associated with aromatic amines. I want you to mostly remember the word aniline because that will be the parent or common name for most other things. So nitroaniline, paranitroaniline or 4-nitroaniline, paramethylaniline, 4-nitroaniline, or 3-methoxyaniline, uh, for example. There are some common names for alkylamines as well, using the amine basically as the parent with a methyl group as a substituent. So instead of methanamine, which would include the whole thing as a parent. This is methyl amine, or tertiary butyl amine, or dicyclopentyl amine. If you have three groups, for example, triethyl amine. These are very commonly used, although it's not necessarily IUPAC naming. It is common to use the amine as kind of the parent molecule, and we'll talk about the substituent that's attached to it.